Hello everyone and welcome to today's session. How to conduct vendor risk management to prevent data leaks. I am Ritika Chakraborty and I will be your host for the day. Our speaker for the session today is Lata Sundar Krishnan, founder director of Clarimond Solutions OPC Private Limited. The session will be in listen only mode and will last for 50 minutes out of which last 10 minutes will be dedicated to Q&A. Requesting all the participants to post your questions in the Q&A window. If you need any assistance during the session, do connect with us in the chat box. Also, we do have two criteria for certification. One, participants need to attend the complete webinar. And the second one is fill in the survey and the right answer to the three questions based on the webinar, which will be sent to you one hour post the webinar. A quick update to all our women attendees as we celebrate Women's History Month. EC Council is happy to announce that our women attendees can gain access to an exclusive code red box bundle designed by global women leaders, Dr. Anuradha Rao, founder of Cyber Cognizance, and Lisa, CISSP certified instructor for the United States Air Force, which will be releasing soon. To do so, please make sure that you attend the full webinar and fill in the survey. Now about our speaker. Lata Sundar Krishnan is the founder director of Clarimond Solutions OPC Private Limited India. She is an electronics engineer with more than 25 years of experience in IT and information security. She has worked with various multinational organizations in a wide variety of technologies. She has experience in cybersecurity audits and consulting, including managing projects for PCI DSS, information security risk management, IT Act compliance, data leak prevention, and vendor management. She has wide ranging experience in training, implementation, audit process, and conducting training for ICAI, Faculty for CA Institute. She has held various leadership positions in software projects, quality assurance and management, customer support, testing and release management. Without any further delay, now I would hand over the session to you, Lata. Thank you, Hritika, for introducing me. Firstly, I would like to thank EC Council and CyberTalks for providing me this opportunity to talk to such a knowledgeable audience. Dear fellow professionals, the Marsh Microsoft Global Cyber Security 2021 survey perceives that there is an increasing interdependence upon digital supply chain, bringing in new cyber risks. 39% of the respondents felt that cyber security posed by their supply chain vendors and partners was high. The cyber investments focused more on prevention and less on resilience than what is required. Organizations are not equipped to respond to hacking incidents as hacking can happen from anywhere, particularly from the vendor's network. Data is the new oil and that needs to be protected. Data can be stolen by hackers from the vendor's network. Extended enterprises, needs to be protected. Vulnerabilities are seen in the partner sites and network. Outsourcing compliances have become onerous. 
regulators penalize the enterprise for non compliances hence vendor risk management has gained immense importance in today's world the fact that vendors network can pose a cyber risk and leak data in a mammoth manner was seen way back in 2014 target a large retail chain was hacked through a third party heating ventilation and air conditioning vendor they had employed a pennsylvania vendor who would remotely monitor their stores attackers access their network and leak information of 70 million customers and 40 million debit and credit cards target had to pay a huge penalty and also spend on improvising their cyber security network similarly in 2019 airbus was breached by hackers this happened through different suppliers rolls royce french tech consultancy explio and two other companies hackers were particularly interested in their technological documents and engine know how i'm sure you would have heard about the famous paradise papers supply chain attack which happened in november 2017 confidential offshore investment documents dubbed the paradise papers were breached by a third party law firms apple b asia city trust and from the company registers of 19 tax havens this sensitive data exposed 13.4 million investment records of the wealthy individuals a recent incident that happened in 2020 was from the healthcare organization health share of oregon in this case a laptop was stolen from their contractor's office this laptop contained 650000 records containing patient data this incident emphasizes on the need for good physical security as well as data encryption for all computing devices ibm security reveals that cyber criminals are quick to find ways to get around in the next generation supply chain attacks have increased by 420% in the last 12 months some of the key challenges i would like to highlight could be enterprise strategy to outsource may not be adequately adequately clear to the team managing the vendor vendor management strategy needs to be defined depending upon the type of model of outsourcing so there could be different models such as complete outsourcing in this case there is minimum interference by the enterprise semi supervision here some outsourcing would involve supervision by the enterprise or it could be some outsourcing which means maximum supervision by the enterprise so the type of model would depend upon the cost standards and overall business goals and objectives this would be as per the convenience of the enterprise all representatives from each team hr procurement legal compliance risk audit and the functional team need to collaborate and meet periodically vendor risk need to be assessed 
and monitored continuously. Owing to resource constraints, you may not be able to hire top class vendors and there could be trade-offs. Time and skill sets in order to do due diligences may not be available or you may not have the budget to outsource. Each time you may not be able to audit. Automation requirements may not have budget or would need tools. Let us look at some of the key risks I would like to focus upon. Identity or brand. Inferior quality of services rendered to customers could impact the brand of the enterprise. We have already discussed the data leakage on outsourcing. So cyber incidents may cause disruptions testing the resilience of the enterprise based on the incident. You could have geopolitical risk. As seen in COVID, countries which were severely impact, impacted by COVID could not deliver due to the lockdown force measure. Financial risks. You could have limited budgets and could cannot spend for contracts. Credit scores of the enterprises need to be verified before you engage them. Compliances. The, vent the vendors need to meet compliances and regulatory needs. So there could be specific compliances like localization of the server or depositing the, end, the key to the regulator. Fourth party risk. A key part of the service could be outsourced by a vendor to another vendor. So this could create a fourth party risk. Reputational risk. The enterprise reputation could be at stake due to shoddy services by the vendor. And this could lead to class C action suit against the enterprise. Business continuity risk. You would have to monitor the BCP of the vendor as well as the BCP of the fourth party. Data security risk. Data that is stored, data that is processed, data that is transferred needs to be protected always. Data process in applications needs to be protected against vulnerabilities. Data that is stored needs to be encrypted. If you are having PII data, then this needs to be encrypted at file and disk layer. Data at all layers of processing, network and infrastructure needs to be protected for confidentiality, integrity and availability against vulnerabilities. You need to consider all aspects of process people and technology. People. People need to be trained and skilled. People are not only employees of your enterprise, but extended employees or contractors of the vendors. People now in COVID, you can see that uh, employees or contractors are hired and they start working from home. And hence, they also need to be trained. Process accreditation, that needs to be achieved so that there is consistency of services. Technological risks need to be taken care of. Correlation of logs and analysis 
need to be performed by specialists. Emerging technologies like AI, ML, again, come with its own challenges and risks. So all regulatory compliances, again, needs to be met. The value of data increases manifold, and so is the sophistication of the hack. This requires careful monitoring by site security experts. Vendor management life cycle. It is very important to understand the unique life cycle for each enterprise. Each enterprise may have its own processes and the life cycle such, such as onboarding, due diligence, ongoing monitoring, on-site assessments, performance review, contract reviews, SLA monitoring, issue management, resolution of issues, which could again lead to onboarding. So therefore it is a cycle or a chain. Onboarding, this would consist of risk assessment, skilling, training, establishing the project office, control evaluation, staffing, records processing, archival, contract management. This is necessary to keep things ready after negotiation. Due diligence. Due diligence, again, is necessary to, un to review vendor sites, vendor standards, the reputation of the vendor in the market, BCM of the vendor. This again needs to be presented as a report to the approval authorities or sometimes even to the board. Ongoing monitoring. Ongoing reviews of vendors need to be done and, and monitored continuously. Therefore, you have audits, reports, follow-up, appraisals, review and evaluation of all the reviews and changes of processes. This will reduce errors in the long run. On-site assessments. This could be done by the internal team or the service team. Data governance. Ens ensuring the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data. Using resources, processes, and tools. So from a cyber security angle, you could have various approaches. Compliance with the loss of land, these need to be met by the vendor. Performance reviews, this involves close monitoring of errors, dashboards, periodic MIS and monitoring. Contract reviews, contract needs to be reviewed time and again to create a unified process. You would need to monitor the deliverables as per the contract. SLA monitoring. SLA monitoring needs to measure the deliverable against what has been agreed as per the service levels which has been mentioned in the contract. So, normally you would find that you always try to penalize the vendor. However, vendors also need to be rewarded. It might tactically make sense to reward vendors 
for delivering better than the expected levels of performances. Issue management. All issues which are emanating against performances, SLA, and on audits needs to be closed. This would again create enterprise wide processes for each issue. So, this process would again start with testing of the process and onboarding. So, therefore, vendor management life cycle needs to be seen. Metrics and measurements. Metrics is very important to assess the performance of the vendor. Service metrics, which reflect the end-to-end -end quality of service or user experiences need to be seen. You could do that by a feedback or a survey. So feedback should be collected from the key member or the function owner who is responsible for the receipt of services from the vendor. The objective is to have a two-way feedback. Now, one to the receiver of the service and one to the giver of the service. So this will continuously improve and eliminate errors. Process metrics. This also needs to be established to improve the processes. So this could be like number of errors, number of incidents, turnaround time, audit findings, compliances, staff performances. Technological metrics. Here again, you need to inform the IT provider at the component level identifying issues and improvement. You could have metrics for controls in place, automation, error-free, or reports to the management. Penalty clauses, this should be used only if there are performance issues with the vendor. It is only the service provider's fault. This again should be a fair process and it should be included in the service level agreement. Third party audits. Third party audits is again another important aspect of vendor management. Many mature organizations have a robust risk based on calendar to assess the risk on an ongoing basis. So when you could have a risk score, as in the high, medium, or low level vendors, this could be classified based on the inherent risks that they are handled, data handled by them. That could be again classified in parameters as confidentiality, integrity, availability, in the various applications and infrastructure. This risk assessment is usually done by an internal staff and ongoing. Screening. Screening of vendors is again important to identify due diligence. Vendor management project office use databases which contain a global list of vendors for each service that is outsourced, pricing, negotiated price, contact list, and options. Locations. You would also need to see where your vendor is located. Some locations may involve geopolitical sensitivities. So this could impact the organization. Site check or periodic monitoring needs to be seen. Business continuity plan. Again, 
this is usually seen by an internal staff you need to review the dr and have an independent audit confidentiality and non disclosure agreements with the staff and contractors need to be seen access control you would review administrative access segregation of duties sensitive access and monthly review of the access list and controls incident management here again you need to identify the response start or time taken the quality and resilience to attacks compliance monitoring you would have to monitor the compliance certification fourth party review all sub contracting arrangements monitor the reports and audits of the fourth party you should not allow a fifth party here information transfer agreement understand the agreement for services compliance periodicity the turnaround time termination of the agreement this is very important in case if you are not satisfied you should be able to terminate the agreement here again you need to ensure that all assets are returned there is a destruction of your data and so on key learnings so key learnings or take away from an effective and efficient vendor management and risk management are delivery of cost savings through use of advanced techniques efficiency or scalability your vendor would be a specialized in the services that he delivers he would have automation employees and should be cost efficient again wherever there is a demand he should be able to scale up and in case of recession he would be able to scale down meeting stakeholder needs business risk you are outsourcing to specialists who manage risk better assurances of quality your vendors are specialized and hence they would be using specialized technology and superior quality standardization owing to the standards they would have proper processes in place they should be able to have very high quality output training programs technological adaptation and digitalization flexibility and efficiency they would be more flexible and efficient transformative needs that could be met through outsourcing where there is no resistance to change including processes persons and technology sophisticated cyber risk management this is possible better with the use of people process and technology owing to expertise available with the vendor this helps in preventing leakage of data thank you thank you very much lata for the session uh, a quick reminder to all our women attendees today don't forget to fill out the survey after this session to gain access to an exclusive code red box bundle designed by global women leaders dr anuradha rao founder of cyber cognizance and lisa cissp certified instructor for the united states the states uh, air force which will be releasing soon this is our gift to you as we celebrate women's history month ec council university has announced a president's scholarship for women in cyber security 
a dedicated women oriented program assisting new and current women undergraduates and graduates with tuition assistance worth $2500 to reach their future endeavors more information about this is in the chat window today's session is in sync with the ec council disaster recovery professional ec council's edrp maps to many roles in the industry like cyber it disaster recovery it business continuity business resolution business continuity planning anyone with an edrp certification is eligible for 30000 plus job vacancies globally with an average salary of $71,000 per annum. Let us know your preferred mode of training through the poll which is live now and we will reach out to you. Uh, we will now take up the question for Lata. Uh, Lata, your first question is, among these uh, which is not important while evaluating a vendor risk management vendor reputation in market or compliance and accredi accreditation a Lata? reputed vendor yeah yeah uh, you heard the question right uh yeah among the three that is vendor reputation uh, accredit uh, accreditation as well as uh, geolocation geolocation only three things and bcp also right no it's compliance accreditation and geolocation all the three oh, okay 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 so uh if you have a reputed vendor, which means that he has, definitely he has better processes and uh, controls, and he takes care of all aspects of the people, process, and technology, which means they would also be accredited. But again, a, a reputed vendor may have location various locations offices to various locations it would again depend upon the compliances that you have for example like in india we have localization of uh, data okay that is the compliance need in such a case we would expect the servers to be in india itself in this case again the location is important of where the servers are present in case if there is a political uh, risk due to the geolocation we could see that in uh, during uh, uh, you know lockdown when there was a tension between india and china uh, so some of the uh, products were not available so there was a supply chain disruption at that point in time. However, if they have a very good uh, BCP in place of uh, a business continue, uh, continuity, in that case, then the disruption is also taken care of. So you should also look out for the BCP when you look at the geopolitical risk. So I would say reputation is very important. And again, reputation, uh, a reputed vendor does not mean that the vendor is expensive. Not necessary, because you would have to weigh out all the other factors that we saw. So I would rank reputation as very important, compliance the next, and geolocation as third. Uh, thank you, Lata. So, uh... Uh, in the addition to the first question, we have another question. Is geolocation a least considered factor amongst compliance, 
reputation and bcf since this pointer is quite subjective so i think uh, i have already answered this uh, question in my previous uh, one uh, so that's what you will have to weigh out all factors and identify the risks so it would be again unique to the organization you cannot have a generalized statement here so for each of these identify what is the risk and see how much what is your what is the expectations from your services that you require from the vendor and based on that you need to conclude so you could have a risk scoring of like high medium low understand what is important and then come out with a conclusion okay uh, our next question is please share on what would be the best practice to set up a data privacy within third party vendor management okay so your vendor is your extended enterprise you should look at what data that you are going to share with the vendor so whether it is through interfaces or whether you are having application and understand the compliance needs so based on that so what, so you would expect that the data is protected at all layers so if it's your uh, interface then that should be encrypted you could use the methods like uh, you know a secure ftp and so on if you are transferring the data similarly the data that is stored again if you are uh, complying to uh, personal identifying information then that needs to be encrypted at the disk level or file level employee needs again that also needs to be seen you should protect mobile uh, devices just as we saw in the case study the laptop was stolen so therefore that also needs to be protected end point needs to be taken care of so access control again that also is a very important factor that you need to verify so that would again depend upon your classification of the data as per confidentiality integrity and availability of the data so based on that you would classify and highlight and i understand the risk here and accordingly decide what you need to do like work from home you would use vpn and so on so that's very important so just like how your employee the data is secured the same way you will have to take care of your own data because if there is any breach the regulator will find the enterprise and not the vendor so this needs to be taken care of okay thank you lata uh, the next question is in conducting vendor risk assessment should vendor be involved in mitigating high risk observed yes vendor should be involved in that you cannot achieve anything without the vendor's cooperation so therefore that is very important okay the next question is in a multiple bu organization uh, structure is it recommended to have a centralized vendor risk management or is it fine with the bus taking care of respective vendor management in case of a bu it is necessary a centralized vendor management would work better because they would be able to negotiate the contract across the bus so if they are using a you know a, and you would also depend upon the scalability so all these factors need to be considered so the pricing and in terms of uh, cost saving 
compliance needs all that can be met better if you have a, a centralized uh, vendor so therefore they would have standards across in terms of uh, processes people and uh, technology so that would be e managed easier okay so uh, our last question is the recent sunburst attack which is a perfect example of supply chain attack what steps do you recommend the vendor and enterprise to jointly take uh, please uh, repeat your question ritika sure the recent sunburst attack which is a perfect example of supply chain attack what steps do you recommend the vendor and enterprise to jointly take yes so the enterprise needs to identify what are the risks so initially they would uh, ideally do a, a forensic analysis and come out with what is missing or what is lacking in their controls and identify the root cause and do a thorough uh, root cause analysis and uh, come out with a solution and the, and also they need to ramp up their cyber security controls so again this needs to be done not only at the enterprise but also at the vendor the case study that uh i took up target so this was the same so here again target uh, they uh, ensured that all their cyber security is in place and they also uh, uh, complied with all the compliances that they wanted plus they would also ensure that the vendor is taken care of so it is the enterprise responsibility to do that because again it is your data and your customers and your reputation at stake thank you once again lata for answering those questions and for the great presentation it was a pleasure to have you with us so this is uh, this concludes the webinar thank you all for attending we hope you have learned and enjoyed the presentation now you all can end the webinar thank you so much